knockouts landing at will. Large left hand. In this fight, he is knocked out and annihilated. No, it didn't bother me at all. I thought he had a knife with him, though. I thought he, uh, he was coming up with a blade. But he was, he was fast. He was faster than what I expected. Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, who I consider as the true goat of boxing, the greatest of all time, is not done writing his legacy, my friends. As we all know, he is going to fight a young hungry lion, the number one ranked boxer in the welterweight division in Errol Spence, this coming August 21st in Las Vegas. Now, a lot of people are saying that if Pacquiao beats Spence, he would be the greatest boxer of all time. This had me shaking my head because Pacquiao already is. He is the greatest boxer to ever live, with or without the Errol Spence fight. All physical logic, but tonight he showed us one more time. He was still Manny Pacquiao. His resume and his impossible achievements will speak for his unmatched greatness in the world of boxing. Let's check him out. Manny Pacquiao is the only eight division world champion in boxing history. It's never been done before. There are weight classes in boxing and in combat sports for a reason. It's to avoid mismatches. But Manny Pacquiao moved up in weight eight times as if weight classes didn't matter at all and dominated bigger champions of each division. And this one, right now, that is, he's ready to That's go. One of the biggest camps I've ever he's won world championships in flyweight, super bantamweight, featherweight, super featherweight, lightweight, super lightweight, welterweight, and super welterweight. He could have easily been a 10 division world champion had he not skipped two weight classes because he was growing up too fast. Now, some people are questioning the value of Pacquiao's eight division world championships. They are saying that Pacquiao was only able to achieve that because from the original eight weight classes, we now have 17. So how do we crush this argument? Well, Manny Pacquiao is the only one in the history of boxing to become a world champion in four weight classes out of the original eight glamour divisions. Take that. It's just a little bit of Pacquiao history. Just in case you guys don't know, you see Pacquiao was from a very, very poor family in the Philippines. When Pacquiao found out that his father, Rosalio Pacquiao, had killed, cooked, and eaten his dog, who happened to be his best friend, he left home. He left General Santos City and went to Manila to pursue boxing. But when he got to Manila, life got a lot tougher for him. He was 15. He ended up homeless and slept on the streets. And he had to sell donuts just to survive. But you know what? He never stopped training. He was a malnourished kid who turned professional when he was 16, which is actually not allowed. So he had to lie about his age and told the commission that he was already 18. He should score with a left hook. Now, since he wasn't able to eat regularly, he was so skinny that whenever he had fights, he needed to put rocks in his pockets just so he could make weight. I mean, this is totally opposite to what the pros are doing today. They fight in the lower weight classes, they drain themselves for the weigh-ins, then they recover and rehydrate soon after. And come fight night, they are one weight class or two weight classes bigger than their opponents, giving them size and strength advantage. Totally opposite to what a young Manny Pacquiao was doing. Now we know Manny Pacquiao is famous for fighting guys who are a lot bigger than him. But do we even realize that the reason Manny Pacquiao is not scared of the big guys at all is because he's been doing this from the very beginning of his professional career. He was 16 years old, a kid, putting a beating on real men. He's a bloody mess. He's looking for a coup de grace. So if you will imagine back in the day, during weigh-ins, 
pro boxers were too busy draining themselves just to make weight, while a young Manny Pacquiao was too busy looking for rocks that he could fit in his pockets so he could reach the weight limit. That is greatness. Manny Pacquiao is the only five division lineal champion. When you say you're a lineal champion, it means you are the best in your weight division. You are the man who beat the man, as boxing experts would say. As we all know, there are multiple world championship belts in every division, courtesy of the alphabet soup WBA, WBC, IBF, and WBO. And they cause confusion because each organization has their own rankings. Now, lineal title gives clarity to that, and it shows who really is the number one guy in every division, regardless of belts. Now, if you are the lineal champion of your division, it means that you stand on top of other world champions who are beneath you. Manny Pacquiao is the only boxer in history to do this in five different weight divisions. He did it as a flyweight, as a featherweight, as a super featherweight, as a junior welterweight, and a welterweight. That is greatness. Manny Pacquiao is the oldest welterweight world champion ever and the fifth oldest boxer in history to win a world title. Boxing, as the experts say, is a young man's sport. Once you're in your 30s, you'll start to feel a certain decline in your speed, your reaction time, recovery, ability to take a punch, and things of that nature. Well, Manny Pacquiao has been out of his prime for years now, but he's still fighting guys who are at the top of the division and still winning world championship fights. Keith Thurman at that time was undefeated, 10 years younger than Manny Pacquiao and was the number one ranked guy in the welterweight division. But Manny Pacquiao dominated him. He dropped Keith Thurman in the first round and he had him hurt in the body in the 10th round. It should not have been a split decision. It was a dominant performance by a 40-year-old warrior in Manny Pacquiao. Usually, boxers of his age would go for lesser opponents. It's a lot less risky and you still get paid, but not Manny Pacquiao. After almost two years of being away from boxing because of the pandemic, Manny Pacquiao is coming back to fight Errol Spence, who is 11 years younger than him, undefeated, and the number one ranked welterweight at the moment. Manny Pacquiao, even at 42, still competes at the highest level. That is greatness. Manny Pacquiao is the only boxer in history to win 12 major world titles. Some would argue that Manny Pacquiao was able to achieve this because at this time and age, we got so many brands of world championship belts from different boxing organizations. That might be true, but it's not Pacquiao's fault. Pacquiao basically said, let me see them belts and I'll collect them. And collect he did. 12 major world titles won by a single little man. It's never been done before. That is greatness. Manny Pacquiao reigned as the number one pound-for-pound -pound boxer in the world for four consecutive years. That is second only to Roy Jones Jr.'s seven-year record as the number one pound-for-pound -pound boxer in the world. Now he puts power behind the right hand and down goes Hall. All right. I'm sure some people are gonna say, well, it's not that great since Pacquiao's only second to Roy Jones' record. 
Hear me out. Here's what's amazing about this. After Manny Pacquiao became the number one pound for pound boxer in the world, he moved up two weight divisions from his natural weight class. So from lightweight to welterweight, and he even had a fight in super welterweight against Margarito. So if you will try and think about it, if Manny Pacquiao stayed in the lightweight division and ruled the pound for pound rankings for four consecutive years, undoubtedly that is already great. But see, Manny Pacquiao made it a lot tougher for him to a point that it's almost impossible to accomplish. Here's what he did. He moved up in weight and went up as high as super welterweight where there were big, legitimate great boxers that could really hurt him. And he stayed there. So as a lightweight, he made it really difficult to maintain his status as the number one pound for pound boxer because he was fighting in the welterweight division. But he managed to hold his crown for four consecutive years, bringing pain and dominance to the big boys of the welterweight division. That's greatness. Manny Pacquiao fought through three boxing generations. Let's say the first generation was during the time of a prime Roy Jones Jr. and a Oscar De La Hoya. The attempt fate, I think. Left hook and down goes Tony. If he could make Fernando Vargas eat his words. If he could knock him out and he does. Oscar De La Hoya has the most satisfying. Almost a resignation in the eyes of Led Waba. Yeah, and Joe Cortez has seen enough. That's a TKO victory. The second generation was the Pacquiao era, where the world witnessed how Manny Pacquiao became the first and only eight division world champion. But to me, the fight, the perfect fight is the way he fought the last round. Punch and moving. The third generation is where we're at right now, with boxers like Canelo Alvarez, Errol Spence, and Vasily Lomachenko. Right uppercut continues to land. There's a perfect straight right hand. Walter's straight right hand away. Like that, right there. Oh my God, I mean, he's toying with Nicholas Walters. This is amazing. And he has got to be careful to Spence, but now Spence going to work, and he drops Bondu, and this one could be... I don't disagree with those numbers, because Pacquiao, wherever he goes, he's always flicking out his right hand. That always precedes... Three boxing generations, and Manny Pacquiao is still going for the young, elite boxers of his division. That is greatness. Manny Pacquiao is the only boxer in history who became a world champion in four different decades. The 1990s, the 2000s, 2010s, and the 2020s. Guys, this has never been done before. But what's new? It's Manny Pacquiao. Keith Thurman was seven years old when Pacquiao had his very first pro boxing fight. Yes. Big first round knockout victory here by Manny Pacquiao to the delight. You see what's really crazy and not normal about this? Manny Pacquiao, already in his fourth decade, is scheduled to fight the number one guy in the welterweight division in Errol Spence. I do not recall any boxer in history who is already 42 years old and still fighting the number one guy of a division that is two weight classes above his own. Because Manny Pacquiao is really a lightweight. Manny, you're being requested here, center of the ring. He's been here before, he didn't broke records here before, he's a legend of the sport, and it'd be my honor to fight him next. Would, is that the fight you want next, Manny? Yeah, why not? I mean, um, we'll give the. We'll give the fans a good fight. You want it? So why is Manny Pacquiao always involved in doing things that don't make sense? I think I know why. Because that is greatness.
Manny Pacquiao is the only four-time welterweight world champion. Again, it's never been done before. The first time was against Miguel Cotto. The second time was a rematch against Timothy Bradley. The third time was against Jesse Vargas. The fourth time was against a young, undefeated champion in Keith Thurman. I think it's better if we rephrase it. Manny Pacquiao is the only lightweight in history to become a four-time welterweight world champion. That is greatness. Manny Pacquiao is the only boxer in history who became a congressman and a world champion at the same time. It has never been done before. But guess what? Knowing Manny Pacquiao, he thought he could do a little bit more. So he ran for senator, won the election, and became a senator of the Philippines and a world champion at the same time. It has never been done before. Can you imagine the amount of pressure he's getting from serving the beloved people of the Philippines and maintaining his boxing status as a world champion? Doing it all at the same time is unheard of. Now let's break this down. Being a world champion is obviously not easy. And if you want to stay as a champion, it comes with a price. World champions have to deal with lots of distractions and pressure from all sorts of directions. The fame, the fortune, lavish lifestyle, the media, gambling, partying, drinking, and things of that nature. Let's call that the typical distractions. See, these things have nothing to do with fighting. But if a boxer allows these things to take over his life, he'll have a hard time maintaining status as a world champion because it will affect his training, his conditioning, and his performance. A lot of boxers have ruined their careers because of this. Manny Pacquiao used to succumb to these things early in his career, but he woke up one day and told himself he had enough. So Manny Pacquiao also has to deal with the typical distractions that world champions go through every day. But when you're a senator of your country and you have to deal with the people that you love, the people that voted you, that's a whole new level of distractions and pressure that only Manny Pacquiao knows how to deal with. So in comparison, boxing world champions have to deal with two things, the typical distractions and the pressure of having to defend your world title. That's already hard to do. But Manny Pacquiao has to deal with three things. The typical distractions. And as a senator, he has to deal with the pressure from the entire country of the Philippines while training and defending his world title all at the same time. He's doing everything and still manages to dominate elite young fighters like Keith Thurman. Uh, well prepared. Uh, he was in shape. I tried to push him to his limit and he came out on top. It's a whole new level of difficulty that only Manny Pacquiao thrives in. That is greatness. Let's look at Manny Pacquiao's meteoric rise to greatness. From being homeless to becoming the only eight division world champion, the only five division lineal champion, the oldest welterweight world champion in history, the only boxer to hold major world title belts in a record of 17 times, to becoming a senator and a world champion at the same time. A lightweight that beat the living daylights out of the welterweight division's elites to becoming an icon and a living legend. What are the chances that his resume gets duplicated? Being the only eight division world champion seems already impossible to replicate. But being a world champion and a senator of your country at the same time, it's never happening again. Manny Pacquiao's life, the contrast of it, how he fought from having absolutely nothing except his guts and his self-belief to actually achieving everything a boxer could ever dream of. It's like some made-up story that is so hard to believe.
but Manny Pacquiao made it happen. His list of achievements may never be broken, at least not in a couple hundred years. But what's really breathtaking about this was the high level of difficulty that Manny Pacquiao was able to accomplish them with. In all of his high profile fights, Manny Pacquiao's always been the smaller guy. And because of that, he always had to work harder and fight harder than everybody else. He is the epitome of greatness because he's beaten the odds in life. In politics and in boxing, at an impossible rate. He might not be the best boxer to ever live, but when it comes to what the great Manny Pacquiao has done in boxing, nobody even comes close to his achievements. Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, the greatest boxer of all time. Thanks for watching.